time. Back to say again, those that are live streaming here tonight, get me bring me a pen. Left on the desk or something there next to what never mind. Been some nice mornings, hasn't it? So we thank the Lord for that. Oh man, it's been cool sitting out there on the porch with a cup of coffee. It's been nice early in the morning. So uh do thank the Lord for it again. Changes the season. Boy, if it all was the same, I know we say, oh, I'm not sure I'd live somewhere where the temperature was the same all the time. I believe I wouldn't be happy even that. <laughs> you know, I like, I like to see a little change once in a while, but uh, either way, it's nice to see you, and thank the Lord for it. And, and uh, who has got to well, thank the Lord. Preacher Owens is better, and uh, he was always able to be with us tonight. So that's a blessing. We thank God for that. And uh, they're improving. And also, um, Thank the Lord that Miss Gail's dad is out of ICU and in a room, correct? He didn't come home today, did he? May send Miss Gail's dad home maybe tomorrow, but I think. Anybody got an answer to prayer? Some Miss Hollins? The Owen's grandson is doing better, right? Is that your grandson? Oh. Great grandson. Great grandson is improving. I know that's right. Man, I thank God he's improving, right? So thank God for that. Thank God that. Owen's great grandson has been doing better as well. Anybody got to answer prayer before we get into some more request time? Um, praying for the ones, obviously, the, um, Lonnie and Fuzzy's brother, Rab. Keep praying for him and Dale's uh, parents, Dad, Aubrey. They keep praying for them and Jeffrey Burns and Christy Daniel. Uh, keep uh, praying for these, if you would, please. And, um, what was on my mind, Nathaniel, uh, Nathan, Nathan, um, Anthony and Tanya's son, Nathan, pray for him. They're in the head of that fracture broke the bone, but thank God they said they were able to get the, um, just a, um, a removable cast, more likely just a port on it, not had to put in a hard cast. So that's good. So thank God for that. They didn't have to put the, um, the hard cast on it. So thank God for that, and hopefully to heal up. They had just gotten home from the doctor's appointment with him, and Brother Anthony is tied up at work. He wasn't able to get all, get away in time to be here tonight, but uh, we do thank God that Nathan is didn't have not have to have a hard cast and is hopefully recover pretty good with that. So thank God for that blessing as well as praying for him. But do keep praying for preacher Miss Owens, and hopefully have some good days ahead. And for everybody here and his uh, infection still in the leg, hopefully to clear up and miss them tonight. And uh, but do pray for them and hope that leg will continue to get better along the way. And I said pray for uh, Miss Gail's dad and uh, that God will just minister to them and trust he'll be able to get home, uh, you know, and have some good days ahead. I'm praying for the family and appreciate you praying still for best. He has good days and, and all for that vertigo. Hopefully it clear up. Hopefully it clear up. And, uh, for, and family of Billy Scoggins, that was um, the leopard's um, son-in-law's dad, right? So pray for him. The leopard's son-in-law's dad passed away, Billy Scoggins. So uh, pray for them, if you would, please, and that family, and then continue to pray for the leopard's daughter, Jenny. And, uh, they'll be able to get some relief of that back pain for her. It'll be a blessing and. Dale and Pam are out tonight as well. Uh, Brother Dale had um, a late dental appointment uh, this afternoon, and they were just getting back into town and having to get prescription filled with antibiotics and stuff like that. So uh, we uh, pray for Brother Dale, if you would, please, as well as that dental work there with him. And hope it heal up good. And um, Anybody else got anything we can... Mm. 
Devin. Hmm. Remember this young man Gavin that said he passed away over the weekend. Like a greater. Never easy, but always hard with something like that. Mm. Anybody else got anything that we can? Up at uh, Pleasant Grove? Really? Are they looking now, huh? Bless their heart. Oh, is he really? Bless his heart. So that's Pleasant Grove up in Livonia. I bet he's been there a good while, hasn't he? Man, Pleasant Grove Baptist Church, pastor. Pray that God help me with that. Anybody else got anything, brother? Huh? Oh, they're going to be gone this weekend. Uh oh, uh oh, good gracious. Oh, man. There were you. You didn't complain about that? We don't laugh right now, but watch that. Am I right? <laughs> oh, man. Let's do. Let's keep praying for, Mr. for Rhonda and Kayla and them as they do take a weekend away. Miss Owens. Oh no. Oh, they're the teachers conference up there. Really, all South Carolina at Myrtle Beach? Okay. Uh -huh. Pray for them. Keep praying for Daniel. Uh, Dustin, I think he heard something from um, Andrew Clyde's office, right? So hopefully that'll, that'll get something found out about him. They get some insurance. That'd be a great blessing, y'all. I know, wouldn't it? Bring it, Brother Roger. We playing football Friday night, huh? Mm-hmm. Heard that. Oh, they pray for Bryson. Bryson, the leper's grandson. The Bryson's the leper's grandson has got some goes to Athens Christian, plays football, and he got bruised up real. So remember pray for him. Won't get any worse after that game. Maybe they play playing an easy team. <laughs> Anybody else got anything in it we can go the Lord in prayer for these tonight? First the Lord to continue to work and and as you can see, them getting ready for missions month, and pray to God to encourage our hearts toward that, and and uh, in a good way, and thank Him for it. And, uh, let's go, Lord, and pray for these things tonight, then, and ask Him to help us. Father, we do thank you for everything that you are accomplishing, Lord. We we thank you for your your good deeds, the things that you do. We praise you for them. But again, we want to remind ourselves that, um, God, we worship you because of who you are. You are the almighty God that never changes, creator of heaven and earth and all that in them is. So we worship you and lift your name up on high and help us to understand, me particularly, God, and apart from the good things you do, who you are alone is worthy of all the, the worship that is rightfully due unto you. But God, you are good to us. You are gracious and merciful, and for those things we give you thanks and 
and praise for what you do. Thank you, dear God, that Preacher Owens is well enough to be with us tonight. He and Miss Owens, and that's always a blessing. And God, I, we mean it when we say to them so often, even though they may feel like they're not able to do that much, it is still such an inspiration to us, God, just to see your faithful servants in presence, just to, to have them in our sight. And I think about old Elisha. God, he, you know, he did not want to let Elijah, his mentor, out of his sight. He wanted to be with him as long as he could and keep his eyes on him. He didn't want to uh, depart from him in any way. And so, God, it's always encouragement to us to have uh, these faithful uh, servants of yours that have been so, so dedicated to you for years, uh, Lord, to just see their presence. And thank you, dear God, that that they would be back with us tonight, and, and uh, the blessing that that is, encouragement to our hearts. And Lord, we thank you that um, the things you work and and providing for us, our needs from the Lord, the change of the weather, dear God, providing for us uh, again just a, a beautiful mornings to enjoy and, and pretty days, and we everything you do to accomplish what your purpose is. We thank you that. You're working a plan. You're working out what you want to do, dear God, and thank you for it. And, Lord, we uh, so many of the things that are upon, they were shared, let alone what's on our list tonight, but those that are sick at home, Rav Hart, and, and the others, dear God, there, uh, Dale's dad, and continual recover his health and need there, dear God, is the um, daily care for him. You'll just work there according to your will, and Jeffrey Burns and this uh, Christy Daniel. I believe, Lord, that's a friend of the Owens daughter as well, that, and you just help them with the cancer and stuff like that, Lord. Thank you for it, and do continue to help our church. And, Lord, uh, any time we have the process of um, having more people come in with the bus ministry and different things like that, God, it presents different challenges. And I just pray you'd help us to understand how to, how to handle them, how to deal with them. That, God, we can minister to those people in the right way, and yet, God, don't let us... Uh, Slack up on our understanding, dear God, of what we need to do as mature Christians and examples that we ought to be, dear Lord, please. And we thank you for it. And Lord, we thank about Brother Hugh and that uh, infection is laid. We trust that it, it is healing up. We miss him tonight. And uh, but Lord, we pray you'd help uh, he and Miss Elaine and Lord minister to their needs, please, and help them, dear God. And we thank you for what you do to uh, strengthen their bodies in, in every way. And, Lord, we think about Miss Gail's dad, Miss uh, Sailors. And again, the doctors doesn't think there's anything else they can do, but, uh, Lord, you know what you can do and what you will do. We pray you uh, work there according to your perfect will and help Mr. Sailors and help the family know what to do there for them, dear God, and send it, when, to, when to send them home, what type of home care to send them with, and just take care of all of that, please, in a great way and let them see you at work and help Mrs. Sailors. You know more than anybody what she's struggling with as well after being together for what 70 something years I think it is and Lord that you just ministered her heart and, and to meet the needs that she has to please and Lord we do pray for Beth and that you had cleared this vertigo and dizziness up and remove that from her so God she would um, effectively do what you would have her to do in service and everything, Lord, and thank you for it. We're teaching there at school, uh, God, and other things that you have for her to do in ministry and serving you. We appreciate all you do to help her. And, Lord, for um, the family of Mr. Scoggins, and you continue to minister there in a good way. And, Lord, the leper's daughter, Jenny, and also for the grandson, Bryson, you, Lord, help him as uh, these ribs are obviously a lot of pain. Lord, you'd help it not to get any more severe uh, for any ball games or anything this weekend. And Lord, just minister there to them, please, in a good way. And we thank you for it. And Lord, we thank you that our Brother Anthony Miss Tanya's son, Nathan, uh, did not have to have a hard cast put on. And thank you for that. And Lord, continue to help him. You know, uh, these broke bones that seemingly are brittle with him and the bones and get broken so easy. We just pray you'd help uh, Nathan and Lord, minister to him and take care of his mom and dad in a good way. And we we'll praise you for it. And that young man there, uh, Javin, Gavin, I believe it best said, uh, second grader there, God, 
you could help this young man. And I do thank you that you have some godly teachers there, uh, influencers in his life that, that, God, if he ever has a question about things that you, you have somebody there that has an answer from you, from your word. But we pray for this young man and his family, minister to them in a tremendous way. And when he gets old enough to understand what happened with his dad, and God, you'd help him to just, again, find a hope in you that so many of us need in our life. All of us need. God, too many don't have it. And Lord, just pray you'd help this young man. And we thank you for it. And Lord, we do thank you that the Owen's grandson is improving as well. Thank you for that great-grandson. Thank you for that progress and continue to help them and think about uh, their daughter. And she's traveling with the, the teens, uh, teachers, I'm sorry, from Carolina and, and give them safe and take care of them. And then also uh, Lyle's family, uh, Miss Kaylin, Miss Ron and them. And just minister there and pray, God, as we start off um, the missions month, that you'll please help us here. And, Lord, give us a, a, a good good opportunity again just refresh our minds of missions and what you want to do and we thank him for well, Dale and the, uh, the recovery there with his um, dental uh, work today pray everything go well there and he'll heal up please and what we do think about Pleasant Grove Baptist Church there in Livonia thank you for the testimony it's been I think of all the way back to Lord the years that we've heard about the, the, you know, the good work you've done through that ministry that church and and God the pastor and and pray you'd help the church, and Lord, you'd guide them. you raise up some men that will be willing to, to, to preach, to pastor. And Lord, you know better than anybody the, the uh, challenging time it is today. so much different than it ever has been, obviously, in my lifetime anyway, about pastoring a church. Or we're, we're changing, God. We're getting closer in our attitudes uh, to what you described as those are the latter days and how we will be and Lord seeking our own not that of others and not wanting to, to really know your word but having itching ears and not want to be offended but Lord so I just pray you raise up some men put in their heart uh, a desire to, to pastor to your people and be a help to them God, help us so many times when our parents, pastors, uh, those we know, that God will know how much to encourage somebody to maybe seek that um, that office, as you said through Paul, of a bishop, a pastor. But, Lord, I just pray you, yeah, Lord, uh, don't, we don't want to push them. We don't want to, Lord, drive them and not be of you. But, Lord, we, we need you to send forth laborers, particularly into this field of pastors. They're needed so greatly, so greatly. So, Lord, I pray you raise up some, please, and we'll thank you for it, dear God, what you would do and uh, how you'd work according to your purpose. And we praise you for it, dear God. So, Lord, work in all these things of our hearts and requests us tonight, and I pray for Dustin Steele and that need for some insurance uh, that God you would just please uh, help if there's these political means uh, these elected officials that can maybe help in this process but God we know you can do it and we pray you will and you'll do a good work there please for your purpose and help Dustin and and all of them to see you at work and Lord I believe there thank you and praise you for it and still help our nation you know the needs that, that are here I ask, Lord, that we'll continue to lift our country up, our president, and everybody that's serving our nation, that, God, you would guide and direct in, in all these things, please. May your perfect understanding and knowledge of all these things be done, all these matters that pertain to our political leaders, uh, whether it's uh, Trump or the Bidens, all these lawsuits and all these things, dear God, please work. It's a time our country's never been through. And, uh, I sure pray that you'd help. you guide these judges and jurors and whomever may be sitting on these decisions. You'd help them. And, Lord, we still do pray for the, those that had to make a decision about when to remove kids from, from a home. 
as we just read, Lord, on the headline news uh, yesterday, I believe it was, about that uh, family. I don't remember where they were at, Lord, a location, but that little few-month-old baby that um, had been just, the fingers were, several of the fingers were eaten, gnawed by rats and rodents. And, uh, and how some defects had visited that home but they didn't make the decision to take that child away. And it's a hard, hard call. God, I pray you'd help those that have that difficult job of when to remove a child from a home. And, uh, Lord, I don't understand those things. I don't, I don't understand. God, flat honest with you, why is allowed in all aspects. But I know. You didn't tell me it wouldn't happen. You said it would come. You said very plainly that all offenses must come, but woe to that man by whom they come. Woe to that person that offends those children. Uh, God, is in your hands. But, Lord, we we pray you'd help those that have to make that decision of what to do to re protect those kids. Help them, God, and give them some understanding, please. And God, I pray you'll still raise up more homes to be willing uh, to reach out and, Lord, be a, a safe haven for so many of these kids. But God, pray the Lord of the harvest that he would send all those things out. And we thank you for everything you do. God, give us a, a good night in your word tonight. Bless the ministry with the kids. And, Lord, just use everything to teach them. God, you, you know they have no understanding, no concept about you. It doesn't seem like, God, they... They understand much of anything about you. And, uh, Lord, I pray you'd help those that are working with them to have the patience. So easy for us to want them to behave and look and dress and act like Christians that's been in church all their life. But, God, most of them, if not all of them, from what I've heard them say, have never been in church before. This is the first place that has ever picked them up or ever had them in church. They don't have any idea, God, what it's about. So, Lord, help them to learn about Jesus and keep burning their heart. We want to see them saved so much sooner than what you know is the right timing. But Lord, I pray that the word will bring forth fruit and it will make them wise unto salvation and help those that are working with them to have the patience that they need and uh, to know the things to say to help these kids. I mean, the homes, I just, the houses that some of these come out of that I just stepped in the doorway a couple times to pick them up. And, uh, Lord, I just pray you'd help them. We'll thank you for it. And Lord, just go before us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'll get that back to you, folks. Put back in there if you don't mind, please. Yeah. Oh. Uh, Back to the book of John tonight, right? <laughs> and um, we uh, get back in this and um, eager to see what all God has for us uh, throughout the study of his word. And I hope you're still reading it and studying it some. And Anybody got anything from what we looked at last week in the first part of John about the, um, you know, the, the what God, John was saying, that, you know, that he, he was not the Christ. He was not Elijah. He was not that prophet. And uh, that he was just a voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord. Anybody got any thoughts on, on that or anything uh, tonight? Maybe come to your mind, you may know it of in your Bible study. But let's look at uh, one verse here in John, particularly right now, and then we'll, um, well, we're going, let me tell you, we'll go ahead and read um, verse 28, um, in verse, down to verse 34. John 1, verse 28, down to 34. These things were done in Bethsaida beyond Jordan where John was baptizing. The next day John seen Jesus coming unto him and saith, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sins of the world, the sin, not sins, the sin of the world. 
This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man which is preferred before me, for he was before me, and I knew him not. But that he should be made manifest to Israel, therefore am I come baptizing with water. And John bare record, saying, I saw the Spirit descending from heaven like a dove, and it abode upon him, and I knew him not. But he that sent me to baptize with water, the same saith un, said unto me, Upon whom thou shalt see the Spirit descending, and remaining on him, the same as he which baptizes with the Holy Ghost. And I saw and bear record that this is the Son of God. What an amazing account, isn't it, of, uh, of this time with John baptizing the Lord Jesus Christ and all that was there. And uh, let's think a little bit about that tonight, about John the baptism and that he did uh, not only of Jesus but of the others prior to, to this time of the baptism that John uh, the Baptist uh, performed up to this point. And let's, uh, if you would just think about the message, the message that John the Baptist preached. It's a pretty s simple message, it seemed like. What, what was that message that John preached? One was obviously about the, the coming of the Lord, the coming of the Lamb of God. Look what he said in verse number 29 again. Verse 29 and 30. The next day, see as Jesus coming unto him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God, which taketh away the sin of the world. And he said, This is he of whom I said, After me cometh a man that is preferred before me, for he was before me. John did not just wait until he saw Jesus coming down the road to say, Behold, the Lamb of God. He made it very clear. That's the one I've been telling you about. That's what I've been preaching about all this time. That's the one. I don't know how long John's been preaching this message. We're not told. He's six months older than Jesus. I believe that's right, isn't it? Because um, Elizabeth, John's mother, uh, I believe the Bible says in six months, the angel came to Mary and, uh, and announced to Mary that God would, that she would conceive of the Holy Ghost. And so Joseph, I mean, John the Baptist was about six months older than Jesus. So when he started, I, we don't know. We have no idea. It just said the next day. John didn't just start baptizing one day, and then the next day Jesus showed up. I don't think that happened. I don't believe that was the case. I believe John was at it for a while. If Jesus was around 30 years old this time, John had probably been doing this thing for probably 15, 20 years he'd been at this. So for however long he's been doing it, John has been telling them there's coming a Messiah. There's coming a Christ. There's coming the Lamb of God. And if you got any thoughts on your mind when he says the Lamb is going take away the sin of the world, you know it's not plural. It's singular. I would, if I would have thought it would have said take away the sins of the world. But he says here that he, the Lamb of God would take away the sin of the of the world. Anybody got any thought on that singular? Don't ask me, because now you ain't got to worry about getting my bubble, because I ain't got one. I don't have one in that deal about the singular, why he said take away the sin of the world. I'm, perhaps it's the fact that in God's eyes, sin is sin. It might be multiple types of it, but it's only just one sin, the rejection of God. And the ultimate consequence of that. Perhaps that's why it's singular or whatnot. But again, when John said uh, that the Holy Spirit, you know, were descended upon Jesus, identified who he was, to confirm with John, that's one he had been proclaiming was coming. So his message involved the coming of Jesus, the promised Messiah, the Christ was coming. And with that thought, we don't find it here in John's account, but if you flip back to Matthew chapter number 3, you'll find where uh, Matthew recorded a little bit more about John's message. John recorded because uh, John is trying to magnify the fact that Jesus is God, the Lamb of God. That's John, you know, that he is God Almighty, the Lamb. So that's John's emphasis, and God the Holy Spirit is using that 
in John's personality. So John is, is focused on the fact that this is the Lamb of God, the Son of God. Matthew, you remember, he's dealing with a kingdom. He's dealing with the Jewish kingdom mindset. Matthew, his, the, what God, the Holy Spirit used of his personality in writing the book of Matthew, God used the fact that Matthew, he wanted to convince the people this is the rightful heir. I mean, he's a rightful heir. And you better get right, the kingdom is coming. So Matthew recorded what John was preaching like this in the third chapter of Matthew, verse number one, if you would. Matthew 3 and verse 1. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And then for this is he that was spoken up by the prophet Isaiah, 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 saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and, and described how this man looked rough. I mean, he would not be invited to preach in the average church. Well, he might would today. <laughs> but 15 years ago, he wouldn't be invited to preach in the average Baptist church. Uh, and like they sure wouldn't be invited to preach at our universities. He definitely wouldn't fit the choir tier. I mean, he looked rough. Camel's hair, leather girdle about his loins, and his meat was locust and wild honey. And he went out to him, Jerusalem, and all Judea, and, and all about there. And, and he said, and, and were baptizing him, confessing, verse number six, confessing their sins. So what was his message about the Lamb of God is coming? And John said, John, Matthew recorded in verse number one, repeating, uh, verse number two, repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. In verse 6, confessing their sins. So Matthew's message was this thought that, I mean, John the Baptist's message was the Lord is coming. The kingdom's at hand. He's right here on us. You better repent confessing your sins toward the Lord and getting that. You know, the what would you say was the message Jesus first preached? We said this before. What was the first recorded type message that Jesus preached? In Matthew, right there in Matthew, look at chapter 4 and verse 17. Matthew 4, 17. There's a note, a little thing right here. It's worth noting. From that time, Jesus began to preach. He, he's getting on the preaching wagon now. He began, you want to respectfully mark that. What did he begin preaching? It's very important. He began to preach. What was it that he began? I remember my first message. Repentance. Repentance. Same message that John preached. Want repent. Same thing that John had been preaching. Repent. For the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Same message that John preached. What an amazing thing. That's the same message that I need to be preaching. So many times I get all, and Jesus, we know that there are other times he preached on different things. How to love your enemies. The things that he preached on. But I, I would venture to believe that somewhere in that those messages, he still emphasized repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. I remember years ago, we were at Camp Maranatha. I mean, it, it, during our first time there at Camp Maranatha, like, and, and uh, I don't know where the man is still living, if he's still pastoring in Athens or not. I really don't know, and I had to call the church or his name. But um, they supported the camp, but not because of him, but because of the previous pastor and, uh, that was there. Uh, he and Preacher Brock, and they were all good friends. So the church had been supporting Camp Maranatha for years. And the other pastor, again, most, a lot of you would know now. I'm sure you've heard of um, there. I'm not going to tell you. Virgil Edwards. You've probably heard of Virgil Edwards, Virgil Edwards. I think he started the first independent Baptist church in the Athens area. But uh, when he retired anyway, when the new folk come in, uh, they still supported the camp, the church, everything did. But 
this pastor um, had me to meet him one day for lunch. We met, I, I don't know, think I'll ever forget it. A little huddle house right down be, below Athens Tech, right in the next to where Vince works at. I think the huddle house or Waffle House, whatever, right close to where Vince works at. That's where we met at. We met there for breakfast one morning, and he uh, he said to me, he said, Andy, he said, I really would like for you to come be my assistant pastor. And we talked to him a lot about it. And uh, and they had a radio, I don't know where they owned the radio station, or they just had a lot of time on it. I don't know which one. He ended up getting like they owned it. So he took me up to the radio station as well. And uh, he said, I want you to come on as our assistant pastor, and, uh, and I'll give you a daily broadcast time on the radio if you'd come. Told me what he would be paying me if I would come. But you can't preach repentance for the lost man. This is a Baptist church. He said, repentance is not for the lost, it's for the saved. My jaw is like to hit the floor. I almost lost that gravy and biscuit that I just, just enjoyed eating. This man had his doctor degree and all these things. And uh, I said, I don't know if I call him daughter, whatever, and so and so. Again, I'm about to call his name again. I don't know if he's still there or not. But anyway, um, whatever I called him, brother so and so, pastor, whatever I called him, I said, uh, obviously you're far more educated than I am, trained in a lot more schooling than I have, and studied a lot more than I have. But I can't agree to that. I can't agree to that. I said, I still have a hard time following the fact that repentance is not for a lost man. I said, I said, Jesus began to preach, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven. Was he preaching to the saved? Was he preaching just to the saved crowd? I didn't swallow that hook. That he was preaching to just to save people when he said, Repent ye. But anyway, uh, so we <laughs> glad I turned that deal down. I, I, I couldn't spot it. Lord willing, the message has been stewed in my heart for a while. It's finding the, t the time God would have us to preach it on repentance. What is the biblical view of repentance? And I'm telling you, it, it is something that is beyond my comprehension. But I, but God has given me a little bit of understanding on it, and uh, and I like to, to share those things. Y'all, you know, I'm finding it to be a, a big case. Repentance is uh, not wanting to be preached, not wanting to be talked about. And uh, but I still believe it's in the Bible. It's still there, and I think we need it'd be good for us. There's a People have an understanding of that. So that was John's message. That was Jesus' message when he first began to preach. That's the first thing he began to say. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's the first thing he began to preach on. Was that? So I don't need to get away from it too far, I don't think either. But that's what Jesus began his ministry on. God helped me to understand how important it is for me to stay to it. And so that's a good study for you to have. If you want to find or study in your Bible sometime, just look at the word repent or repentance and read the various times it's talked about in the Word of God and see is it, is it for the lost or is it for the saved or who is it for? And try to get an understanding on that. It would be a good study in the Word of God for you. If you would uh, dive into that, just study on repentance a little bit. It would be a great blessing. So that was John's message. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Behold, the Lamb of God is coming. He's coming. He's coming. You better repent, confess your, confess your sins, and be ready for him when he gets here. Okay, and what was John's method of baptism? And that thought about his method of baptism, let me ask you this right here. Did John baptize just anybody? 
I don't think so. I believe it's about like whenever that Ethiopian eunuch asked uh, Philip, wasn't it? What did it hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, if thou believest, you can get baptized. That was the same message for John. John said, boy, when the Pharisees there once came to him, he said, where's, your, where's the, the fruit of your repentance at, of your confession? Before you can get baptized, you need to conf repent, confess, get right with God, and then John said, I'll baptize you. He wasn't just baptizing everybody. just said, oh, let me get in the water. Whoop, whoop. And they didn't know who he baptized or whatnot. They had believed what John had been teaching about the coming of the Son of God. They believed it. And so, therefore, they were baptized. It was to identify that baptism with John was to identify, though it was called a baptism of repentance. It's called in the book of Acts. And John himself said, I baptize you to repentance. That was John was saying again, it's, it's identifying that you have repented of your, of your sins, you repented, confessed your sins, and you have believed on what I've been telling you about the coming Son of God. You believe it. And you repented and confessed those things, and you're identifying that that's what you believe. You're identifying that you're not believing in all this other things that you've been taught or confused about or all that. You are, when you're baptized by John, there's no doubt it was identifying that they have repented, confessed, believed on the promise coming of the Lamb of God. And we know that John also baptized by immersion. By immersion. Y'all remember no Jerry Clower joke about baptism? And y'all heard though, uh, I mean, but I don't want to listen to Jerry Clower still, but old Jerry Clower joke about uh, baptism. And I think it was old Marcel was dating this girl, and she was a Methodist, I think Jerry Clower said, and you know, they just believed in spranking. And old uh, Jerry Clower, old uh, Uncle Bercy said, no, so that girl, if she's going to get married into to this family, she's got to be probably baptized. And old Marcel was trying to tell Uncle Levetter that, his daddy said, but that, what difference does it make? He said, she's been sprinkled on the, on the top of her head. And old Uncle Bert said, no, we deep water Baptists. said, we, she's got to be properly baptized. She's got to be baptized properly. Deep water baptism. Old Marcel said, what if we take that in the river with the preacher and we get out about knee deep? Is that good? No, no, no. She's got to be all the way. He said, then what would I get right there? She get that chest deep in the water. No, 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 no. We deep water Baptist. I told you. She got to be out there deep water. He said, Daddy, why don't we get her out there and just the top of her head is sticking up? That's the only thing showing the very top of her head. No, no, no. He said, I told you that's all that mattered then, Daddy, just the top of her head. And that's what they sprinkled was just the top. But we believe in deep water. And that's what Baptist means. That's when he's called John the Baptist. That word Baptist means Immerse or dipped under, and uh, is there. And again, common sense would tell us that, wouldn't it? Let alone the, the Word of God taking our common sense tells us that. Where was John baptizing at? The Jordan. You say, why the Jordan? Because I'm telling you, when we went over there, but I don't know if y'all found another water hole or not, but that's the only water hole we found in all of Israel, except for the, coming off the dead, the, um, the Sea of Galilee was a Jordan River, and it's putting there dried up. But they don't, they don't have creeks everywhere like we got around here. That Dead Sea, and not the Dead Sea, you can't drink that, that stuff. That Jordan River runs into the Dead Sea. But the Sea of Galilee and the Jordan River, well, what I was told when I was there by the guy, that for, was Israel's only major source of water. Now they've gotten technology where they can take salt out of the Mediterranean Sea and somehow use that. God's giving them folks some understanding of that. But they had pumped the, the Sea of Galilee down so low because that was their only water supply for all of Israel. So John, that's about the only place he had to baptize. And it says also in the Bible, John was baptizing there because there was much water. If all the thing John was doing was just sprinkling, then why didn't he have to have much water? He could have just been uh, having baptism anywhere. 
So that tells this old backwood country boy without a lot of educated sense, it must be a particular reason why John was at the river where much water was. That, that explains a lot to me there of why John was doing that. And so he was there. And we know that that, that concept of baptizing was by immersion, taking them under. And the same thing with the open eunuch. Why did he say anywhere, hey, we've got a bucket. Well, you think he made that long journey from Ethiopia to Jerusalem out of a bunch of water supply? I would imagine he had a lot of canteens on that caravan. But it wasn't until he saw what? A, a water hole. Did he say, what to him be baptized? There's some water out there. Apparently, Philip done told him, you got to go under, brother. We deep water Baptists. You got to be baptized. You got to go under. So when he finally saw a hole, he says, out in the middle of the, of the highway in the travel road, he said, there's a puddle. There's a, some water that's deep enough. Can you baptize me out there? All that showed me that it has to be important, right? It has to be important. It's not just because we're Baptists and we're thinking that that's what it ought to be. We're Baptists because that's what they believed that it was taught. And that's where John was. We call John the Baptist, John the Dipper, John the Mercer. That's what it was. But it was a new concept. It was totally new concept of what was going on. Now, repentance and confession of sin had been preached all through the Old Testament. What did Jonah preach when God sent him to Nineveh? What did Jonah re say? Repent, repent. Turn to the Lord. So that's been, that was nothing new to hear John say, repent, confess your sins. It wasn't too new, a little bit different, but, the, for, but they believed that the Messiah was coming. But they about, excuse me, lost hope of that. But John was, was saying, he's here. I'm telling you, he's right here. He's here. He's at hand. But they, the concept of Messiah coming wasn't totally new. But this thing of baptizing, to our knowledge, that was new. They had never heard of this before, of being baptized. No wonder it says, uh, if you would, in Matthew chapter 21, let's look and see what, what the Pharisees were so confused about this thing. In Matthew 21, I believe this is right, verse 25. Remember, they were questioning Jesus by what authority did he do what he was doing. And uh, these Pharisees were asking Jesus those things. And Jesus said in his answer in, in Matthew 21, verse 25, he said, the baptism of John, which was it? From heaven or of men? And they reasoned with themselves, saying, if we say from heaven, he will say unto us, why did you not then believe him? But if we say of men, we fear the people, for all hold John as a prophet. And they answered him and said, We cannot tell. And he said, Jesus said, And then neither tell I you of what authority I do these things. So the mentality was that they were saying to them that, Lord, to Jesus, we don't know what, where this come from. We don't know where John got this idea about baptizing from. You know, we have no record of when, again, John, John started preaching, nor what God told him to do, other than the fact of what it says here in John, back to John chapter 1, other in there. Make sure I can find my right verse. Yeah, in John 1, 33. And I know him, not. He's talking about I, God has not, has not did what he said he's going to do. He said the Holy Spirit would, would abide on him. Verse 32. He said when he come, God told him, when the Spirit descended from heaven like a dove and abode upon him, 
He said, you will know that is the one whom I am, who is my son, my, my anointed one. In verse 33, and I knew him not, John said, but he told my God that sent me to baptize with water. The same said unto me. So John was declaring that God had told him to go baptize like he was doing. We don't have that record of God doing that. John said that's what God told him to do. But Jesus confirmed it. Jesus made it very clear that it was of God. It was what God had sent John to do. Jesus confirmed the fact it was God that ordained it, that established that. And that's important to see in, in just a few moments. But why did John baptize Jesus then? You have to understand this was not man-made. The baptism of John that he was doing was ordained, commanded by God. That's very important to understand if you're going to get any concept of why Jesus was baptized by John. You have to understand God commanded it to be done. But that thought in mind then, if you look back to Matthew chapter 3, that's where we have the record of uh, Jesus being baptized by John. In Matthew, Matthew chapter 3 and verse 13. Then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him. But John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to me? And Jesus answered and said to him, Suffer it to be so now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all unrighteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened, and upon and unto, up and unto him, and he saw the Spirit of God ascending like a dove, and lighting upon him, and lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. You know, John would have been, oh, I would have been much like John, if that ever the case, but man, John when Jesus came up to John and, and said to him that he's to be baptized, John said, no, sir, I need to baptize you. I mean, you need to baptize me. You don't, I don't need to baptize you. I don't fully understand all of that. I don't understand all of this to its fullness, to be honest with you. Because this baptism, in one sense, was called a baptism of repentance. Was it not? John's baptism was called a baptism of repentance. Jesus had no repentance to be made. He did not have to identify that he had repented of anything. So I'll be honest with that. That's a little bit of what I don't fully understand on that. But Jesus gave me another answer to satisfy me. Because when John was saying, Lord, wait a minute, I can almost imagine John, I don't know what he said, but John the Baptist, I can almost imagine in my mind, though, he was probably saying, wait a minute, Lord, you don't have any sin. You never had to repent. There's nothing you had to confess. You are the Lamb of God. And you want me to baptize you? John didn't understand it. He couldn't conceive what all it was about. But the answer that we have recorded, how much more Jesus said, if he said anything else, I don't know. But what God recorded for us was what Jesus said, suffer it to be so. No, you might not understand it, John, but just do what I'm telling you to do. Suffer it to be so. Just go ahead and, and do what I'm telling you to do, John. For thus it becometh us, to fulfill all righteousness. I don't know whether that us is referring to all of mankind, and we are to be made righteous. We can't be in God's presence without being made righteous. Or is he talking about the Godhead? That we, the Godhead has got to fulfill all righteousness. 
the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit has got to fulfill everything that we required to be done. Perhaps that's to us, because I believe that to be true. The Godhead had decreed what had to be done. Had he not? The Godhead, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, which are absolutely one, they decreed what man had to do to be right with God. They gave the law. Where did the law come from? The Godhead. Did it not? All the Old Testament law came from God. God gave it to them. It's what man had to do to be righteous with God. Knowing they couldn't do it. But the Godhead gave it. It was required of the God. And get that understanding with me, please. What God helped me to understand this concept a little bit more. The Godhead required what had to be done for man to be righteous. Everything. You remember what Jesus said? I come not to destroy the law that was given from the God. I didn't come to destroy it, but to what? Fulfill it. He had to always Everything that the Godhead required for righteousness, he had to do it. Hope you understand that. It was required to be the righteous sacrifice. He had to do everything that the Godhead required. And all he had to obey all the laws of God. He, couldn't, he could not leave one of them unfulfilled. According to what he said, I had to fulfill all of them. And that's what he said. It is become of us fulfill all righteousness. Whether, be, whether he's talking about all mankind, which we have to be, but we can't fill it. Only the Godhead can fulfill all righteousness. Only the Godhead can. And if God had ordained John the Baptist to baptize, if that was a requirement from God, for man to be right with him, then Jesus had to do it. He said, if God declared it, I've got to obey it. I can't leave anything that the Father left undone if he told it to be done. I've got to do it. And if he declared everybody that believes in him to be baptized, I believe the Father. I have to obey everything the Father gave. That's the only thing I can come up with, folks. Anybody got any other thought on that about what Jesus said here? Any other thoughts on it? Then Ryan says, yeah, that's good, Brother Kirk. That's true. That's true. Anybody else have a thought on that? Blows my mind all those things that's there. So let's press on down then. So with that thought somewhat in mind, this baptism that John was doing was for the people to identify that they would believe that he was coming. It was a transition from the Old Testament out with the old, in with the new. It was that transition time of man going from thinking that they had to fulfill certain things to be righteous with God to realizing it, you can't do that. It's a belief. It's believing in the Son of God. It was that transition period. It had been taught, as Paul said, in a veil in the Old Testament. They got bitten pieces of it, but they didn't understand the full concept of it, of the coming of Jesus. They didn't understand he was going down across the them. They didn't understand fully all of that. John comes on the scene, and he's trying to make it a little bit clearer, a little bit clearer for them. And so they're, they're going to believe that somebody's going to come and take away their sins. They know how he's going to do it. Even the disciples didn't understand it. You, know, you read the story? They didn't know that he was going to die for their sin. They couldn't conceive that thought. So it was a little bit clearer to them, though, than what the Old Testament was, that here he is, the Lamb of God is going to take away your sin. So Jesus, that the baptism was identifying what they believed he would do for them. Now, our baptism that we do 
is believing he already has. <laughs> his baptism now, as Paul said in the book of Acts chapter number 19, when he met those converts that had been baptized by John or by John's disciples, and Paul said to them, have you been baptized in Jesus' name? They said, we ain't never heard of that. We never heard of that. They had heard the message from John's disciples that had scattered all over the world. They had, they had gone out as well. John's disciples had gone out from Jer Jerusalem as well. And they were preaching, repent for the kingdom. They were preaching the same message John had, had preached. They didn't have uh, Facebook and all that stuff. They couldn't get something instantly that quick across the world. It took them a while to get a message. So by the time the world, these other, John's disciples, if he'd been preaching for 20 years, they done been to different parts of the world. You know what I'm saying? And they were in different parts of the country preaching, repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent, the Son of God is coming. Repent, the Lamb of God is going to come and take away your sin. Be baptized. It's showing you believe that he's going to take your sin away. They didn't know the whole story because they had left before Jesus ever came on the scene. You got that picture with me? So when Paul got to the same area where these guys had already done been to, they had already gotten there and already preached what John had been preaching. Paul got there and he saw the group of people that were believing what John had preached. And Paul said, let me tell you, he's, already, he's here. He's already come. He died and rose again. They said, we didn't know that part of the story. We just heard he was coming. We didn't know he done did all of that. Oh, yes, and Paul preached to them Jesus. And then he said, you need to get baptized in his name now. You need to get, you're identifying that he's already done come and died and rose for you. A little bit clearer, that make any sense? It's a little bit clearer every step of the way. It got a little bit clearer to him. His baptism did. And now it is, it is clear it is what Jesus did. Everything is revealed a little bit along the way as God unveiled all these things to us. Does a person have to understand all that in order to be saved or baptized? How much do you think John understood? John said, I didn't even know who he was until the Holy Spirit confirmed to me who he was. I mean, I thought it was going to be my cousin Jesus. I, I was 99.9% .9 certain, but God said, you won't know for certain, boy, until I send a dove down or the Holy Spirit down in Atlanta. Then you know, and John said, once that happened, I knew Beyond any shadow of doubt who he was. He didn't know all that to start off with. He didn't understand about Jesus what he was about to do. He didn't understand it all. So, so many times we think somebody's got to understand everything. We don't. What we've got to understand is what a person needs to understand is they're lost on their way to hell. And the Lamb of God can take away their sin. If they believe on him. Repent, and again, we're talking about having that sorrow, that sorrow. That's where it starts at, and trust the Lord. But we don't have to understand everything. You never will. You never will. We just have to believe what we do have revealed to us. Father, thank you for tonight. I pray the Lord you dismiss us again. Take care of us. we go home and help us throughout the week, please, to, to take this message that you've given to us and let us keep preaching it. And not wavering from it, please. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless y'all. Thank y'all.